Toronto is in the process of building what could be the most transformative public transport project in all of North America. That being Go Expansion, which aims to turn the city's somewhat archaic and generally very infrequent commuter rail network into a proper rapid transit system. If we look at this map of Go Transit's network, it looks fairly impressive, and one might think it goes a long way to providing good transit coverage to a big part of Toronto's urban area. However, the map doesn't tell the whole story. At the moment, and especially in the past, these lines have not been used even close to their fullest potential. This is because these lines were mostly created in the 60s and 80s at a time when governments were almost entirely focused on car infrastructure, and public transport was often an afterthought. The public transport project that did go ahead needed to do as much as they could with the limited funding they would get. Now, in Toronto's case, the city already had quite a few railways running through it, but at the time they were mostly just being used by freight trains or the occasional long-distance passenger service, and didn't really do much to serve the Toronto neighbourhoods they ran through. GO was able to take advantage of this. Instead of having to build all new rail infrastructure, they could just add some, often quite bare-bones, passenger facilities onto these existing tracks, which made the network pretty simple and cheap to build. This lack of infrastructure investment was basically fine when these services were first created, as they were really just intended to be commuter services that would take people from their homes in the suburbs to their offices in downtown Toronto in the morning and then back out to the suburbs again in the evening. But this has often meant that these lines have had pretty poor frequencies outside of the morning and afternoon peaks. In fact, besides the two Lakeshore lines, it's only been quite recently that GO's lines have actually run service in both directions throughout the entire day. And even now, two of its lines, those being the Milton and Richmond Hill lines, still only operate a handful of services towards the city during the morning peak and out of the city in the evenings. This has massively limited the usefulness of those lines, as if you wanted to travel away from the city in the mornings, towards it in the evenings, or in any direction in the middle of the day, late at night or on the weekends, well, you'd be out of luck. Now, things have been slowly improving. As I mentioned, 5 out of GO's 7 lines now have all-day service in both directions for at least a significant part of the lengths of the lines, but frequency outside of peak hours still remains an issue with the core parts of the two Lakeshore lines only getting trains every half an hour, the core sections of the Stouffville, Barry, and Kitchener lines only getting hourly service, and again, the Milton and Richmond Hill lines, as well as the outer sections of some of the other lines, not getting any off-peak service at all. This has all left Go as a very limited system with very limited use cases. In its current state, the network only really makes sense for 9-5 to five commuters heading specifically to downtown, and this has meant that despite quite a few neighbourhoods in Toronto having train stations, they can hardly be called transit friendly. But these days, we tend to think of our public transport systems a little more holistically. They're supposed to help us with more than just commuting and should be a viable option for travel at any time of day and to more places than just our city centres. This is where the GO Expansion project comes in. Its aim is to take the existing, slow and infrequent commuter rail network and transform it into a proper mass transit system with faster and a lot more frequent all-day service. A key aim of the project is to raise the number of GO trips run each week from about 1,500 back in 2015 to over 10,000 by 2030, which should see the core parts of the network getting trains every 15 minutes in either direction, which I'd say is basically the minimum frequency you need to be considered turn up and go. When that's achieved, it will go a long way to making GO something people are able to use for all sorts of trips, at any point in their day, and without really needing to worry about missing their train and having to wait ages for the next one. But increasing frequencies is just one part of GO expansion. To achieve its quite ambitious goals, the project involves a whole suite of infrastructure upgrades. So what are they and what will they mean for the system? Well, one of the biggest changes is going to be the electrification of key parts of the network. The plan is to electrify the Lakeshore lines from Eldershot all the way to Oshawa, the Kitchener line up to Bramley, as well as the full links of the Barry and Stouffville lines. Currently, GO only operates diesel locomotive haul trains, and it sounds like the plan is to stick pretty closely to this model and just switch out the diesel locomotives for electric ones. These new locomotives should be compatible with the existing carriages, so the changeover should be quite simple. 
Outside of the obvious environmental benefits switching to electric trains will bring, it should also bring improvements to service speed, as electric trains are able to accelerate much faster than diesel ones. That particular benefit could probably have been even bigger if they switched from the locomotive hauled model to full-on electric multiple units, but that would have been more expensive and plus the current fleet of GO trains is really cool and unique looking, so I'm not that unhappy they'll stay that way. Now obviously the electric trains won't be able to travel beyond the section of track that's electrified. So what you're going to have is frequent local style services stopping all stations along the electrified section of track, or the diesel trains will then be used for either hourly or peak hour only services that will run further out, but skip stops being served by those local services, letting them get into downtown Toronto faster. This is a bit of a generalization because current plans would see some electric trains being used for these less frequent express services on certain lines, but if we compare these maps, we can see that the electrification and service frequencies line up pretty well. It does, however, raise the possibility of these faster express services getting stuck behind the slower all-stops local services, though there are plans to address this as well, at least in some places. As part of GO expansion, various new sections of track are being laid. For example, an additional set of tracks is being added on the Lakeshore East Line, which will mean it's now four tracks wide for most of its length, and that will allow these slower local trains to use their own set of tracks, while faster express GO services, longer distance via rail services and freight services won't need to get stuck behind them. All this laying of new track is also going to be solving one of the GO network's biggest underlying problems, the fact that a lot of it is single tracked, which of course dramatically limits its frequency. You can't achieve all day 15 minute frequencies when large parts of your network can only handle trains travelling in a single direction, and as a result the expansion is going to involve the double tracking of significant parts of the network, including the Barry line which should be double tracked as far as Aurora, and the Stufel line which should be double tracked as far as Unionville. The Kitchener line is already at least double tracked for the part of the route that will be getting 15 minute service frequencies, but beyond that part of the line, new crossing loops are going to be added to improve the reliability of services using its single tracked segments. The outer sections of the Lakeshore West line, between Hamilton and Niagara Falls, are also going to remain mostly single tracked, but a new section of single track is going to be built, and actually is just about to open, that will improve travel times and reliability along that part of the route. Beyond just adding new track, upgrades are coming to the existing tracks as well, in the form of grade separations and improved signalling. The improved signalling, based off the European train control system, will be rolled out across core corridors and can support headways as short as just 2 minutes, which should be a great help when it comes to frequency, while the grade separations will see, and in fact have already seen, various level crossings across the network removed. This should help with reliability and safety, as cars and pedestrians will be less likely to find themselves on the rail tracks when they shouldn't be, and it will also limit the impact of higher frequency rail services on road traffic. All in all, the upgrades I've mentioned so far will bring huge improvements to the quality of public transport in the areas already served by GO trains, but the scope of the expansion is bigger than just that, and we'll see GO trains start to serve whole new communities as well. Along with a number of other projects, including SmartTrack, Toronto is going to see quite a few new GO stations open in the coming years, and quite a few of these stations are going to be infill, built along existing GO alignments. Currently under construction on the Barry Line are Bloor Lansdowne, which will offer direct interchanges with the Line 2 of the Toronto subway, and a station at Caledonia that will connect with the Eglinton Crosstown LRT. There are also a couple of stations still in the planning stages, including ones at Innisfil, Kirby Road, Mullock Drive, and Spadina Front, with the latter expanding GO coverage to more of Toronto's downtown, as well as providing an interchange with the 510 streetcar. The Kitchener Line currently has three upcoming new stations, one at St. Clair Old Western that will provide an interchange with the streetcar route 512, King Liberty which would provide interchanges with the streetcar routes 504 and 501, as well as Mount Dennis that would provide an interchange with the Eglinton Crosstown LRT, as well as the Union Pearson Express airport train. The Stufel Line has two upcoming stations, one at Finch Kennedy and another at East Harbour. The East Harbour stop is planned to become a major transit interchange, being served by the upcoming Ontario Line as well as GO's Lakeshore East Line. Speaking of the Lakeshore East Line, apart from East Harbour, the bulk of that line's new stations will be coming as part of the Bowmanville extension, which will see the line extended beyond Oshawa to new stations at Thornton Corners East, 
Ritson Road, Cortes and Bowmanville. Then finally, with Lakeshore West, the new stations planned for that line are basically all along the section between Hamilton and Niagara Falls, with Confederation Station that's set to potentially open this year, as well as Beamsville and Grimsby, but those two are still in the planning stages. If they do go ahead though, these new stations could start to form a sort of local commuter service for the neighbourhoods between Hamilton and Niagara Falls, which would be cool to see. Beyond these, there's also quite a large number of existing stations getting upgraded. I won't list them all here, but as well as helping these stations cope with the increased train frequencies and subsequent passenger numbers, these upgrades should also bring better accessibility and improvements to interchanges with other transport modes. On top of that, as I said earlier, a lot of the existing GO stations were kind of built on the cheap and are fairly bare bones, so these upgrades can also help make them a bit more modern and provide a better customer experience. Now, the improvements I've mentioned so far have not been an exhaustive list of all of the work being done as part of the GO expansion project. There are others like building new stabling yards and buying new carriages that are also underway, but I do think they represent the biggest changes this project will bring. And I also think, overall, these changes will have a pretty big impact on Toronto's transit landscape. The city is going to go from having an infrequent commuter-focused rail system, with a very limited set of use cases, to an RER-style rapid transit network that provides turn-up-and-go frequencies to a very substantial part of the city's urban area. So I don't think it's an understatement to call this one of the most impactful transport projects currently underway in North America. Most other cities can only dream of being able to develop such an extensive RER-style system in just a matter of years. I also expect it to prove very popular. The existing GO train network gets around 60 million riders annually, which I think is actually quite impressive given how poor its frequencies are currently. Once GO expansion is complete, not only will there be more stations, which simply means more people are within the catchment of the services, but the increased frequency should also trigger some induced demand and result in substantial ridership increases. But with all that said, I do think there's more that could be done, and the GO expansion project should be used as a jumping off point to making the system even better. The most obvious thing, and I think the elephant in the room of this whole video, is the lack of upgrades coming to the Richmond Hill and Milton lines, both of which still only operate single direction peak hour services. Now there is a reason for this, with that being that GO owner, Metrolinx, is not the main owner of the tracks used by those lines. Instead, they're mostly owned by freight companies who give preference to freight trains over passenger ones. I noticed when I did a video about high-speed rail in Canada that, in Canada, there's almost an antagonistic relationship between the freight and passenger railways. Now, I think both can and should coexist, and if freight companies are limiting the expansion of passenger services in a major metro area like Toronto, perhaps the government needs to step in. In the USA, by law, freight railroad companies need to give priority to passenger trains, though in practice this doesn't always seem to happen. Regardless, if Canada implemented a similar policy and actually enforced it, maybe this would help. Regardless, I would like to see more attention paid to the Milton and Richmond Hill lines as, with better frequency, they too could form a very useful part of this future rapid transit network. Beyond those two lines though, I would also be keen to see even more infill stations built. Stop distances between GO stations can be quite long, and with the introduction of express services, the addition of new stops to the local services won't really impact the travel times of people coming from further out. I would also like to see the land use around stations improved, at the moment many stations are just surrounded by parking lots, which reflects their original purpose as commuter services for people living out in car-dependent suburbs. But as this purpose changes, so should this land use and these stations could be used to create high-density transit-oriented developments that would provide some much-needed supply for Toronto's notoriously expensive housing market. There's also the opportunity for new lines. I can't help but notice there are still some heavy rail lines running through the city that don't currently offer passenger service, like this one which conveniently runs through Toronto's midtown and would provide a ton of useful connections to the city's other transport modes. Now, I'm far from the first person to suggest this line, but I think it could form a very useful part of the GO network, though it will need to be a topic for another video, so subscribe if you want to see that. And finally, one of the biggest opportunities I see for GO is introducing more through running at Union Station. Currently, all lines terminate here, but there's little reason the various lines coming from the east can't be connected with lines coming from the west to let passengers more easily travel on to destinations on the other side of the city. 
Now in practice this does actually currently happen, especially on the Lakeshore lines as we can see here when travelling from a station on one line I can just stay on the same train to continue on to the next line. But at the moment it's not a guarantee this will happen and it's not really a feature of the network. As the network becomes more of a rapid transit system rather than a commuter rail system, we can expect people to start using the system for more than just travel from the suburbs to downtown, and enabling through running would be a simple way to make the system much better at accommodating these new types of journeys. Ultimately though, even without these further improvements, the current Go expansion project is a fantastic showcase of how cities can turn their old commuter focused rail systems into modern rapid transit networks. And personally, I think over the coming years and decades, we'll see Go become an even more integral part of how Torontonians move about their city. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you want to support the channel, check out my Kofi, it's always greatly appreciated. And if you want to find me elsewhere, my Instagram is at city.moose and my Twitter slash x is at city underscore moose one. I'm not really doing much with either account at the moment, but I may in the future. Regardless, I'm Kyle, aka City Moose, and as always, thanks for watching.